Well, you have the, the skills, it's in your skills checkbook, in your skills book, mm -hmm. volume three, volume three of the, the text. 
it, it's called a Dale power, and it has two Velcro um, sides that actually appear to either side of that thing. Make a change usually once a week or whatever necessary. You threw it away. Oh, yeah. oh. Sorry. So this is what it looks like. And it has Velcro on either side. So I'm going to place it I'm going to flex the neck. point I observe my patient to make sure that they're still breathing good. If they have um, supplemental oxygen, I would then attach that supplemental oxygen to the patient. I'm going to um, remove all of the supplies that I use. I'm going to take off my gloves. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to document the procedure. I'm going to document the client's response to the procedure, and I'm going to document the assessment data, whether there was any excretions or blood um, during the procedure. I'm going to make sure the patient is comfortable back in the low position, call bell, and um, invite them. Yeah. You said you take Do you go all of that away before you take off your gloves? After you're all done? I would. I would, because I wouldn't want to touch it with exposed hands. So I just take all of that away. Like after you're done, would you throw all, all of that away before you take off your gloves? Or would you take off your gloves and then I'd probably just take it all away. Okay. Like just my gloves and then take my gloves okay. off. Yeah. In your kit also, you might see um, what we call crank ties. It looks like this. And um, in your book, it also explains how you can um, keep that crank plate in place by using the ties versus this, this power. And what you do is you take one of the ends, put it through that little opening, and tie a knot. Flex the neck forward, pull it through, and do the same thing on this side. Um, and you may see this being used. It's, it's very uncomfortable for the patient, and sometimes you might see that it causes a skin irritation for the patient. Continue. I use this as my sterile kit. If you wanted to, you could take out that grate and you can touch it, lay it down, and yep. And the inside is sterile, and you could just lay your supplies on that. That and you could option. use the, the blue chuck pad to put under the patient yeah, for could, any, you know, incidentals or right. that might you happen while you're cleaning. Just for, just for non-sterile stuff. 
that you need. Like say, I could probably have put this on the patient's chest instead of, yeah. instead of that. Yep, okay. and laid that there just because when you're done with your brush or you're done with your sponges to wash, it's nice just to put them someplace. And you were talking that that would run when you do a supplement that I would say was a little more instead of just the same thing that you had at first. That one is the absorbent too, so it doesn't matter. Okay, that's yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? When you when you're ready to turn um, take this out, um, just turn it counterclockwise, and then it comes out toward you in line with the curvature. So you want to pay attention to that to see how to put it back in. So I wouldn't be putting this back in this way. It wouldn't it wouldn't go. I have to put it um, in line with the curvature the way that the trace is. So it comes out in line with the curvature and it goes back in. That, that's what that means. I can't see the yeah. way it goes. Okay. If you put it wrong way, it's Right, you're going to have, you're going to get um, resistance. Right. Um, and then it, it, you can actually feel it lock. There are um, inner cannulas that are disposable. They look a little bit different than this. They have um, a little flange on either side, and you pinch it to, to sort of um, take it out. And then you pinch it, and it kind of adheres to the trach plate. So when you're doing trach care with a disposable, you have your clean glove, and you take out inner cannula that's disposable and you throw it away. And then you have, just like I opened up this sterile kit, you open up your sterile inner cannula. So it's opened up ready to go. So then you just would pick that up and place it. There's no cleaning involved with that. And that's what you normally see more and more in the hospitals. You wouldn't have to clean the patient's stoma if they had a disposable one? You would still clean oh. their skin and you would still clean the plate, but you wouldn't have to clean yeah. the inner cannula. No. Okay, so, so around that stoma, um, around that trach plate is a stoma, and the skin, depending on how old it is, um, you know, or if it wasn't, if they have a lot of secretions, can cause a lot of irritation. So you might get redness, swelling, bleeding, crustiness around there. So you want to make sure that it remains clean and that you document and assess that. You said you want to make the make sure that the inside of the cannula is dry, but the outside can be wet. Yeah. Okay. And you want to shake it against your um, kit okay. and make sure that the inside is dry. Okay. The book says to um, dry it with the pipe cleaner, but that is something that we don't do. And the outside you want, you want moist, it doesn't matter if that's not dry because that helps with putting it back in. Okay. You said once you take the cannula out and dip it into the saline, it's no longer sterile, right? The hand that you use? Yeah, that's no longer sterile. I just want because I'm kind of getting mixed up with hand with yeah. journal which one's not. So this this hand is the one that I'm doing the cleaning and cleaning. picking up everything. Okay, so the um, dominant hand then. Yes, the okay. dominant hand would be the one that is sterile. The one that actually picks the inner cannula up is the non sterile yeah. hand. Okay. Is that is there to support the tracer? I mean to you support your trace like the non your non dominant hand as your as okay. you're cleaning with your dominant. When it gets to the point where you actually place that kit, it's, it's kind of difficult to do that one handed. So with that, at that point, you would use two hands. So then you do become um, sterile at that point. But at that point, you don't need to worry about being sterile anymore right. anyway. Right. Once you're putting that gauze up underneath, 
you just want to be careful not to touch the part that's going right against the stoma. Yeah. Try not to touch it as much as possible. So at that point, you wouldn't be touching the cannula anymore because you're not right. in the cannula. Right. The cannula is already in. Right. 